Hi family, I'm back. Today I have something new again. I'm going to do a DIY. Um, I'm going to be making a little non-electrical chandelier for my granddaughter's room in the corner because it's a little dark. So I'll show you the before and after pictures of course and we will go through this a little bit together on making it. Most of it was relatively cheap. Okay, so this is going to be the base. Got this at the dollar store. Got some beads here for a little decoration. Um, I believe I got this at the dollar store. Some hooks I got at the dollar store instead of using some wire. Um, some jewels. Those were ordered on eBay. I have my little soldering wand. You're going to need a glue gun. Now these are buttons, but I'm going to show you what I'm using them for. I only need a few. Uh, but they're crystal looking buttons. And I got those at Joann's. Um, the chandelier drapes I got on eBay. I don't remember how much those were. Everything that I get at Joann's, I wait for a 50% coupon or make sure it's on sale already. So, <clears throat> these chains I'm going to be using, excuse me. Now, I bought these at Home Depot. Really, really cheap. So, I got, I think, six feet because each piece is three. That way, I can cut it or have it as long as I want it. And I only need one light for this project. But I got this at Home Depot. So, I can always place the other lights somewhere else. So what I'm going to start doing is marking my holes, putting the hole, I don't know if you can see that, oh yeah, right there. So you want to find your little red markings, or green markings, or whatever color markings you did, and that's where you're going to make your hole. You want to go in there nice and slowly so it don't come out all crazy, and it burns through fairly well. Uh, make sure that your room is ventilated because this does stink. Okay, so now I've done it all the way around. I can't tell if you can see because of how I got the camera positioned. But anyway, there's a hole. So some of those marks will be covered. Uh, there's a hole. So now what I'm going to do is put the hole at the bottom and those will be a little bit bigger it's a little hole and the other hole and then the third hole what you want to do is you want to make two but one just one B longer so that when it goes over the top Then you put the other one under there, so you have a complete, nice precision at the tip. So I'll do one for you. Let's get the long one first. And what I do is I'll glue the very tip. I know it's a bad angle, but I'll glue the very tip up here, just a little dot. Am I going to have to... Okay, there we go. Yeah, that's too big of a dot. And you know, if you make it too big, then it looks real messy underneath. So you want to put it well above the diamond line. So when you put your next roll under there, it'll be right underneath it. So let's glue that down. I don't know how good of a... If you can see that, it's kind of hard doing it this way. But let's go for it. Oops. <laughs> I think I put a little too much at the end there. But I don't think you'll be able to see it once it's all done. Hopefully. Because it's going to be in the air anyway. So, I mean, unless you're going in there with a magnifying glass and a telescope, you really ain't going to see that. 
but I do like to make my things as nice as possible. I'm kind of a perfectionist, so when things like that happen, sometimes I can get very unhappy with it. But for the most part, it came out okay. And then I'll do this other side real quick just to show you. So um, let's go back some here. Yeah. So I'm going to just do a little dot if I can. Sometimes these things are so hard to squeeze that you actually end up squeezing out more than you intended. So you put that right underneath this top one to get that perfect point at the top. And then we're going to go ahead and go down that last strip. So what I like to do is as I squeeze it, I like to try to rub it in a little bit because then it doesn't spread out as much. But the glue is getting lower so it's a little harder to do that. Okay. And then I'm going to put a new glue stick in there so I don't have to worry about squeezing it too hard. But So close up you can kind of see the glue a little bit. But like I said, it's going to be in the air so you won't be able to see it too bad. So anyway, so the tips are like I like it. This is around the bowl. On to the next step. So what I've decided to do with all the ridges around here, since I marked them, is I'm going to put a little jewel on each one, including... Uh, can't see it but including the one with the holes after I put the wire in. okay so um, this is how much I've done so far and the ones that don't have it yet is where I have to put the chandelier hooks and then I'll put one over that okay so I'm on the last few dots I was just showing you what I was doing a little dab of glue put the jewel And my sinuses are bothering me. No, I don't have a cold. And no, I'm not sick. I had to go to the doctors and get some anti I mean, antibiotics. <laughs> so, this is how it's looking. Not bad, huh? Um, and then those are, like I said, those are the holes that I'm leaving open for the chandelier strips. And then once I get done wiring those shut then I'll put one oops over that I put this one on because I wanted to see how it was going to work out as far as the chain that's going to hold it up so I'll show you how I did it I used the button to stop it so that you can hook it this is where you get your little ornament hook and So what you want to do is you take your little ornament hook and the button is a two, it's a regular button. So um, the sh crystal part I'm going to put inside this way. So when you look in there, it doesn't have the flat part. So I don't know how well you can see what I'm doing. But you want to thread it through like that. And then go all the way up through one hole. And then you're going to take it down as far as you can. Because you have to straighten this out a little bit. In order to be able to put it back in through the other hole. So I don't know how well I, that's showing. So you put it in through the other hole, like you thread the needle, and then pull it through. Now you can pre-bend this, which would probably be easier, but I just did it like that. So then you have it like this. So then remember I showed you, I drilled the holes, where's that hole, right there. 
So you want to push that through the hole like that. And then it's going to be on the inside like that. And then you want to take the end of one of your links. see that you can't really see it me not having the proper uh, camera positioning it's hard to show you but anyway so you just want to thread both of these ends to the end of the chain like that so it looks like that and then you want to do is you want to bend this as far down as you can to a hook See that? and then what you're going to do is well what I did was I just started wrapping so you want to wrap and all you have to do is turn this if you turn this like a screw then it will automatically twist the, uh, the rest of the wire I don't know if you can see that but it'll twist the wire around the other wire so hold one end of the wire see that part and get the chain part and just twist the chain part and it'll turn the button along with it that way you can wrap the wire down and then get as far down as you can you can use your pliers or whatever to flatten it out which I'll do afterwards so that's what I did with this one too now how even that is uh, doesn't look as low as that one so I might rewrap it but I just want to give you an idea of how to do that and then when you're done you have all three and I'll show you that. So I'm going to rewrap this one to make it just a little bit lower. And then I'll be right okay. So I've got all the chains on. Told you I was doing three. That's the inside. And that's where the buttons are to keep, keep it steady. And it's real light. I got the thinnest, you know, the littlest chains at Home Depot. So. Okay, so... Taking the short end through the hole without the chain hoop. Now, most people just use the chain hoop, which is fine, however you want to do it. Um, to me, I could use those extra chain hoops for a different project. So this is why I'm doing this. So all you do is wrap it around like that. And then you're going to straighten this end out to where it's like that. I said it's going to be every other one so miss that hole and then this hole stick it in there so now once you have it in there you want to pull it up as far as you can get it and put that little piece that's sticking out under the rim so that's what I did and then bend it. See, these are so e easy to bend however you want. So, you're going to bend it. And then you're going to take it, take this long piece around that was inside. And wrap it around. And push it up in there. Because what I'm going to do is squeeze it with my pliers later. And then cut it. And then that's it. It's real simple. Uh, it'll probably be easier for you to use the hoops that come on here. But I just like to save the extra hoops. And the wires are thinner. So on the end of this, I'm going to put my teardrop. Just thread it through. every other one so far 
<clears throat> I'm going to finish that, and then I'll start on my shorter ones. Okay, so, um, when I was doing the chandelier, I miscounted. I have 16 teardrops, but I kept forgetting I could only use 15 because of the number of spaces in between each chand hanging chandelier. So I had to resize, rethink, and all that. So instead of doing even lengths, I just did them random. So this is how it's looking, almost like a jellyfish. But looks pretty nice. So um, I went on and tied them all up, and I cut the little loose wires inside and just pushed them up. That way, if you ever decide to change it, it's not glued on. Now... <clears throat> I got the little light, and I'm going to mount that. And the cool thing about this is this, is this one has the timers. And some lights have a lot of, I mean, some remote controls have a lot of lights, but this one has four, which is fine. I got the double-sided tape. Put one on the bottom, one on the bottom of the chandelier. And it's an easy twist off, so when you have to change your batteries. So I got the light in there, and uh, these are push button lights, but since it's going to be a chandelier in the corner, I'm going to be using the remote. So this is why I was saying we needed a light in that corner. So that's the light. Now I didn't get a chance to cut the chain yet, because I have to get a little chain cutter. But anyway, um, I just put a little hook in the in the top corner, and you can change it to green, which is pretty, red, which I love, blue, that's pretty too, and you can set it on the timer. But at the same time, it also kind of lightens up that corner when this light is on so now we can see a little better okay so if you guys liked the video which uh i usually don't do diys but you might can get your own idea or whatever but this is a very inexpensive chandelier with no electricity required just a few items and you can do it yourself have a great day